Now let's look into the brief history of Cloud Foundry. We will only touch point some key dates and timeline. It is to understand who are the major players in Cloud Foundry development now and how it came into existence. So just a little background is sometime essential to get an idea of the stakeholder involved in Cloud Foundry. So initially Cloud Foundry was started as a project in VMware within 2009 to 2011. And within this particular time, we got the main part of the core of Cloud Foundry developed. And the name actually came from a different organization which VMware actually acquired. But the Cloud Foundry was the tool which was originally developed inside VMware. Then in 2012, we got a open tool from Bosch and this tool is basically toolkits which you can utilize to manage entire application lifecycle inside Cloud Foundry and this was with open source license Bosch released it so anyone can use it you still will see that if you try to install Cloud Foundry on Google Cloud Platform Google Infrastructure you still will be using Bosch Direct so those tools we can see or we can experience if we work with Cloud Foundry mode. So this toolkits basically can also be utilized to manage the entire lifecycle of application within Cloud Foundry. So in 2012, this came into existence. And then 2013, Pivotal was formed. Pivotal was an entity which was created and it was managed by VMware, General Electric and EMC. They all were managing Pivotal and Cloud Foundry project then got shifted inside Pivotal. So Pivotal was holding three product within its scope. One is Cloud Foundry, second was Spring Boot and third was Rabbit MQ. So these three project or product was basically need to be marketed with Pivotal. And later on, on 2014, the open governance platform was created with seven platinum members and two gold members. So they were responsible for contributing to the development of Pivotal and also majorly Cloud Foundry and responsible for introducing any features in Cloud Foundry. So basically they control what kind of features will go in Cloud Foundry and what kind of feature will be introduced to Cloud Foundry. In 2015, this number of total number of members in Open Governance Foundation increased to 40. And at this point in 2019, the total number of members are more than 65. Also, if you look into Cloud Foundry, it basically comes with Apache 2.0 license. And Cloud Foundry is built with Ruby, Java, and Go. The older version of Cloud Foundry, you will find a lot of Ruby, programming and in the newer version you will find a lot of go programming in cloud foundry so this was a brief history of cloud foundry who developed it and who are the stakeholder responsible for the cloud foundry and what is the license of cloud foundry so now let's go to the next section to understand a little bit deeper inside the functionality and functioning of cloud foundry welcome back in this section we will be focusing our attention to Cloud Foundry and we'll try to understand first what is exactly Cloud Foundry, why Cloud Foundry is getting so much popularity and also how we can work with Cloud Foundry. We will do some hands-on and then once hands-on complete, we'll try to understand what internally goes on in the Cloud Foundry when we put some application into it. So let's start this section. So if we look into the previous section diagram, what we have is different model for a cloud provider. So we have infrastructure as a service, IaaS, platform as a service, PaaS, and software as a service, SaaS. So our focus here is on infrastructure as a service and platform as a service. Now imagine you have a vendor which is can be any vendor, can be Google Cloud Platform, can be Amazon Cloud Platform, can be Azure. And when you go and try to get a vendor who gives you 
infrastructure as a service. At the end, you are basically getting hardware resources or computation power. It is basically the machine where you can run your application or can put your operating system or middleware. So basically, when you go for infrastructure as a service provider, then you are basically getting some kind of computation resources where you can execute some operation or application or even install some operating system or middleware. So let's start with that. So in this layer, if we try to take the three layer of runtime environment, middleware and operating system and say that these three layers, let's replace this with Cloud Foundry. So if we bring Cloud Foundry in this three layer and let's assume that now Cloud Foundry is also managed by the vendor, then we have a pass model with us where the above layer, which is application data, is managed by you, but the Cloud Foundry basically will be managed by the vendor. So, what happens now in this case is we are shifting from a infrastructure as a service model to a platform as a service model with the introduction of Cloud Foundry. So this is basically how Cloud Foundry is installed also in a third party vendor machine who provides infrastructure. And basically they also put Cloud Foundry on top of that infrastructure and then give access to certain accounts or spaces of the Cloud Foundry. So let's try to understand first from a generic aspect. So this was the connection from our last section of Cloud Foundry, but let's try to understand what exactly Cloud Foundry in more detail. So if we look into the Wikipedia definition, what it says is that Cloud Foundry is an open source multi-cloud application platform as a service governed by Cloud Foundry Foundation. Now, the important thing here to note is Cloud Foundry is primarily an application which runs on top of a multi-cloud environment. Now let's understand how this actually take place. To understand more about Cloud Foundry or what it is, let's try to see how it is actually installed or how it is basically deployed, the technical term of installation in enterprise. Okay, so what basically happens here is that if we have a cloud, and this cloud can be from any vendor, can be from vSphere, which is from VMware, can be from GCP, AWS, or can be from IBM, or can be from Microsoft Azure. So we have this cloud, and what basically they are going to give us, the vendor, they're going to give us machine. So I'm categorizing three types of machine. One are large machine, one are extra large machine, and there are a lot of medium size or small machines. So the large machine might have a computation power or RAM of 16 gigabyte. The extra large might have 32 gigabyte and the smaller one might have two or one gigabyte machine. Now, on top of that, if I put my software where the important brain of the software, which takes all the controlling decision, actually sits in this large machine, then there are routers which actually route all the commands within this entire application. And there are small, small worker nodes where actually I execute my application. So they are all sitting in this small VMs. So if I take this entire layer of application, which internally manages the computation resource of all the individual machine, then I have a similar implementation of Cloud Foundry. So that is how Cloud Foundry actually is deployed. We will not be covering the exact deployment steps because they are very lengthy. We have to install a lot of pre-installation steps are there and then we have to put Cloud Foundry. There are a lot of routing mechanism also we have to take care of. So we will not be talking about installation step now, but for a generic overview, what we got from this information is that the Cloud Foundry is a layer of application which is managing lot of computer resource. And now this 
Cloud Foundry will be helping us to manage the computer resource. Now, why is that required? So if you see traditionally what developer used to do, they used to allocate their virtual machine. And even if they are not using that virtual machine, they would be still allocating that for themselves. Even if there is no program running, no computation utilization happening on that VM, still developer will be just holding on to that if in case they need it. Now, what happened with the Cloud Foundry? Cloud Foundry now provides a layer which manages a lot of things apart from computation resource, which we will see in the next section on why Cloud Foundry is popular or why it is gaining much popularity. So let's go into the next section to understand what are the key benefits or what are the key features in the Cloud Foundry which allows it to be one of the popular go-to platform as a service application. So let's go to the next section to discuss this.